Hey guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is advice for recent graduates of a medical billing and coding program. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. We are going to be talking about some pre-test things today as far as like how to get ready, how to prepare, and uh, internships. Are they worth it? Should you do them? So let us begin. All right, today's episode was inspired by a viewer comment. So I'm going to read her comment and then I am going to talk about it and I'm going to share some links um, in the description box. So disclaimer first and foremost, <laughs> check the description box, please. I have tons of really good links for other resources, for the books that I recommend, um, for the candidate hand guide, which will be down there in the description box. And it also has my contact information. So please check out the description box. All right. So. Here is her comment. She says, AHIMA, or the American Health Information Management Association, says not to write in the books or they will not let you take the test, from what I understand. This is untrue. I'm going to say that first and foremost out of the way. Um, there is so much to cover in studying. It's overwhelming. She's taking the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate. It seems like, from the study guides, that there are things that we didn't cover. I may be wrong. I am dreading the test because it is timed. I want to know when I pass the test, can I do an internship even if they don't pay me? Can I just watch, ask questions and learn so that when I get a real job, I will feel more comfortable? So I'm gonna start off by addressing her first concern, which is Ahima says not to write in the books or they won't let you take the test from what I understand. Her understanding is not correct. When you look at the candidate hand guide, and this candidate hand guide gives you all the rules for all of the certifications that AHIMA offers, right? And so on page 15, where it says test center restrictions, because Pearson View is, the is, is who administers the tests, right? Um, so it says test center restrictions. No reference or study materials may be brought into the examination room. Code books with Handwritten notations or comments are allowed. They are allowed, but must be free of any notes containing coding rules and guidelines from other reference materials. For example, coding clinic, CPT assistant, and similar mater materials. Code books with posted notes and or loose materials will not be allowed and no handmade tabs will be allowed. So when it comes to the tabs and people will ask me about the tabs, they'll say, well, can I, how should I tab it? And can I tab it with AHIMA and the way that they have their certification exam set up? The only tabs that are allowed are the tabs that come with the original book. And so, uh, because the AMA, the American medical association, CPT professional edition comes with tabs already, you can use those. Those are allowed. But um, because they came with the book, that's the only ones that are allowed. You are not allowed to have any handmade tabs for the AHIMA exams. Now, AAPC is something completely different, but this is for AHIMA. Now, right there, it tells you code books with handwritten notations or comments are allowed. Now, whoever told her or however she found out that you wouldn't be able to take your exam, of course, that's wrong because they do allow it, but they don't want you to have like coding clinic and all this other, a lot of stuff written. If you have excessive writing, then yes, obviously you won't be able to use those because you know, the, that's excessive writing and they don't want you to look like you're trying to cheat or anything like that. So that is why I always recommend leaving your books as clean as possible. The books already have the answers for you. You do not have to add all these notes. People ask me all the time, well, how do you transfer your notes to your book? I don't because when it comes to looking up the codes in the time that I'm in the exam, I'm not going to want to see all these other writings and notes and everything else on the book. I need to concentrate on what the book is telling me because again, the book has the answers. So that is why I always say don't write on your books. Don't tab your books because if you are using your books frequently and you are uh, flipping through all the pages like I have recommended to you guys so many times to flip each page and just look at it. You don't have to read the books, right? 
the ICD-10 CM manual, the CPT manual, the HixPix manual, the ICD-10 PCS manual. You don't have to read them word for word, but you do, you should look at all the pages because when you do that, you get familiar with the book. And when you are in that test center, right, you want to make sure that you are as relaxed as possible. So getting as familiar with the book as you possibly can is the first step to sort of mitigating those feelings of nervousness because you will know, okay, I'm confident in where things are in this book. I know that this appendix has this information and it has that information. I know where to find my anatomy tables. If I need to find something on anatomy or something like that, it'll, I know where to look at in the book. Um, I use Optum 360 coding books. This is not an ad for Optum 360. I love Optum 360. <laughs> I trust their books. And I trust their books because they're very comprehensive and they have so much good information in them. And that is why I always recommend them. If I'm going to recommend any books, um, obviously I'm going to trust them the most. But they have wonderful illustrations in their books. Lots of really good notes uh, in the book to help you already. So that is my advice on that. So take the time, guys. If you are not sure, don't just go by somebody's word, okay? Take the time to look at these candidate hand guides and make sure that you understand these rules because if this this person had looked at that and, and heard that incorrectly, that information incorrectly, oh, okay, well, you know, I can't use this one because it's got some kind of little um, doodad in it or a little writing, you know, whatever. <laughs> and so, but it turns out that yes, you can, but as long as it's not excessive. So just make sure that that is something that you do, that you take the time to look at those candidate hand guides. The other part of it is there's so much to cover in studying. It's overwhelming. She's taking the CCA. Now the CCA is the entry level, it's considered entry level. I had this credential for many years. I stubbornly held on to the CCA. Uh, yes, I did, because there's a lot of people who trash talk the CCA and I wanted to show people this is what a CCA can do. <laughs> and so as a CCA, I trained many people. I trained people who had their degrees. I trained doctors, I have trained other nurses, I've trained other staff. So I've done plenty when I had my CCA. Uh, I now currently have my CCSP as a certified coding specialist physician based. So, and the thing with the CCA is it is covering both inpatient and outpatient, which I never understand the trash talk because this is somebody who's clearly beginning new into the field, right? And they know and understand both the inpatient and the outpatient. Now, the only other one that's going to eclipse that obviously is the gold standard of medical coding credentials which is the CCS or the Certified Coding Specialist. Again, um, that is covering both inpatient and outpatient, but it is considered the mastery of inpatient and outpatient. So uh, that is something that you have to know. But with the CCA, there is a myriad of things that it could cover on that exam. So while it may seem like a lot, if you're doing a lot of those drills like you're supposed to, and you're taking the time to block off those times before, you take, you, you schedule your exam. Uh, if you're taking the time to block off two hours at a time, you can time yourself and you can go through these um, practice exam manuals and you can do those drills on your own. And so that way you can start to time yourself. You can also do your workbooks, go back through your workbooks and work through all those word problems and everything and read the recommended resources that you should when you're gonna sit for the CCA. So this way you can really truly prepare yourself. It's not something to get freaked out about folks. This is just the culmination of all of your time in school. So if you have been using your time in school wisely, uh, you will be able to get through this time and it won't be uh, as scary as you think. And a lot of times people are more prepared for their certification exams than they give themselves credit for. So, all the self-deprecation has got to stop because the thing is you do know and if you pay attention and you're sitting there and you really dig deep you will be fine and the worst that could happen is that you have to take the exam again and it's okay there's plenty of people who've had to take the exam a couple of times and there's been some people who had to take a few runs at the exam because they allow their nerves to get the better of them 
when you pass the certification exam, whatever exam you're taking <laughs> in the uh, medical coding spectrum, <laughs> whether it is the CCA, the CCSP, or the CCS, or if you're going with AAPC, the CPC, whichever one that you're taking, this and you pass is going to unlock the door to a brand new future. Um, but you have to be ready for this journey. This is not an easy journey, folks. This is going to take some finesse and it is going to take you to believe in yourself as well. A lot of people will get so hung up on not believing in themselves and then they lose all of that time that they have invested in learning this because they get so frustrated that they want to quit. You should not want to quit just because maybe something frustrates you. Guys, you need to reach out and find a mentor. Look with your association. If you're with AHIMA, go to one of the local meetings. Or if you're with AAPC, go to a local meeting, virtually or in person. And that way you can make those connections and try to find a mentor, somebody that will help you. Uh, if you are on LinkedIn, I'm on LinkedIn, Medical Coding with Blue. And I've seen people reach out all the time. Hey, I need a mentor. And tons of people veterans volunteer their time to help the new people that are coming up. Um, but that is something that you can uh, do for yourself. So that is something that it would be very helpful. If you are struggling and you really don't understand something, find a tutor. There's tons of them on LinkedIn. I am also a tutor myself. My rates will be in the description box below if you're interested in setting up a session. So there are things that you have to do above and beyond uh, yes, and some people may be upset because they feel like their program and like she's saying She feels like maybe she didn't learn all the stuff that she should have but the domains uh, For what the test is covering is on the AHIMA website at ahima.org A-H-I-M-A.org and AAPC if you're taking one of their certification exams It does break down what's on the exam as well what sections it is covering so that is something that you need to do. So many people come to me completely lost. I blew. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. I don't even know what to study. What is on the test? Go directly to the uh, website itself of the uh, association that you're going to sit with their certification and find out. That is part of what we do is research. So take the bull by the horns and start doing your research and checking that out. If you're reading something and it doesn't make sense, then that's when you can say, hey, can somebody answer this question? Then that would be okay. But the basic things like that, what is this test going to cover? Um, that is something that you can find out directly on the website itself. Now, um, just make sure that you are studying to the person who made this comment. Make sure that you're studying. Go over your manual and make sure that you are taking note of things that you feel like you struggle on and then dig deep in that section and really start to apply yourself in studying more. If it is the CPT manual that's hanging you up, make sure that you do more work, workbooks, you know, for that. Um, if it is the ICD-10 PCS portion <laughs> that's hanging you up, make sure you do more inpatient coding. If it is a diagnosis part, make sure you do more of that. So. There's lots of resources out there. I have done the resource videos many times <laughs> for medical coders. Uh, lots of people have success before on that. I mean, when I suggest Just Coding, that is a really good website to use because it has a free subscription and it has a paid subscription. On the free subscription, they have five question quizzes and they cover diagnosis coding, um, inpatient and outpatient procedure coding. So that is a good way to practice. And sometimes people will tell me, well, Blue, those were really easy. I need something harder. Okay, they're, they may be easy because you're looking at the answers because it is multiple choice, right? Um, but you can cover up those answers and start to look them up on your own. And so that's, that's part of it, to get the drill practice. And you can start looking up codes faster. And so that is something that you can try to do. Uh, at least that's what I would recommend. Um, because when people ask me, what do I recommend? That is exactly what I recommend. So take the time, do the drills, take the time that you're going to be in that certification exam, those two hours, if you're taking the CCA, block that off and pretend like you're taking that certification exam. So no phones, no, nobody bothering you and do the drills. And that's all you can do. Okay. 
Um, the other one is I'm dreading the test because it is timed. You shouldn't dread it because it's timed. Um, everybody knows from the very beginning of these programs that these certification exams are timed. Don't let that lock you up in your head that, oh, it's timed, I'm gonna get so nervous. It's about reviewing your knowledge. And this test is testing your competency as far as what do you know. You do know the material. Don't worry about the clock, okay? Answer the questions as quickly as you can. Time yourself so that way you can feel comfortable when you get to the test center, okay? If you've taken this, those times and, and done drills and done the two hours or done the four hours or done the five hours and 40 minutes um, at a time, then you know how you'll get through and what parts you need to work on. At least that's my advice anyway. <laughs> and I want to know when I pass a test, can I do an internship even if they don't pay me? Can I watch, ask questions and learn so that when I get a real job, I will feel more comfortable? I'm gonna put this very bluntly. There is not going to be a time when it's going to be a, a handhold thing for you. I know that that would be a dream for a lot of people as far as like, oh, it would be nice to be able to observe. But keep in mind that we are working with patient information. This is private health information. So a lot of these places, they're not going to allow you to intern even for free, okay? Because they uh, have to protect this information. It would be a HIPAA violation if they let people back there willy-nilly. Oh, well, I'm a recent graduate and I want to volunteer and look at, oh, look over your shoulder and ask you questions. People still have production that they need to meet. Um, these patient records have to be protected. So no, you can't just sit back there willy-nilly and look at these things. This is why... People have to be hired because if you're an employee, then it's something different. If you're just interning or volunteering, uh, again, uh, that is more for the college programs where they're doing the internship, externship. Some trade schools do do that um, as well, but they've already worked out a deal with that facility or with that place. So that is when that comes into play. But if you are just somebody who has just been through a program and say, hey, can I work for you for free? That's likely not going to happen. Do you need an internship? No, you don't. Do you need an extern externship? No, you don't. A lot of times what happens in those situations is it's for learning, right? But every place does things different. There's different facilities that have different rules about coding and things like that, depending upon the insurance uh, that they accept and things. So there's different things and different criteria that goes into that. But that's something that you have to remember that they are protecting private health information. So a lot of times if you ask to volunteer, the answer is going to be no. But there are alternative positions that you can get into that is going to give you some exposure to codes. If, if you don't want to start off being a medical coder right away, if you want to start off being a biller, that will give you ex exposure to codes. The great thing about starting off as a biller when you're a medical coder, when you're certified as a medical coder, is that number one, you don't have to be certified to be a medical biller. That's number one. A lot of times, they all they're asking you to have is a high school diploma or a GED. And there's nothing wrong with having only a high school diploma or a GED, okay? So you can get a, a job as a biller. And you can say, well, I have been trained as a medical coder, so I'm going to understand when the insurance company denies it, I'm going to understand the technical rules as to why. Because a lot of times billers don't understand the technical rules of why a claim may have gotten denied. Now, there are some really good billers that do understand the nuances and they're like, oh yeah, this is why. <laughs> uh, but there are some billers that just don't get it. Um, they don't understand why they can't do this or why do they have to add this modifier or was there a modifier that was supposed to go in there? So that is something that when you are working in those types of places, that's a skill that you can say and share. Hey, I have my medical coding certification. I would like to start off as a medical biller so that I can get some hands on with these codes. And there you go. There's your entry right there. And once you spend some time as a medical biller, then you can transfer over to being a medical coder. Well, I've been a biller, so I understand this insurance company, that insurance company. I've worked with this 
um, electronic health record or I've worked with this type of encoder and now you've got experience, you've got uh, some something on your resume that says you have some relatable experience to coding. There's also prior authorizations. Prior authorizations is when a provider will hand you the record, the medical record and say, I wanna do this procedure on this patient for this diagnosis. Call the insurance company and make sure that we can do this. And if the insurance company says no, then it is your responsibility to look through there and see if there's anything else that's supporting that would support that procedure or you have to go back to the doctor and say, well, they're saying no, so uh, here's the, we gotta do this next step or that step or whatever, whatever the uh, next step in that facility would be, right? To escalate that. So that is something that is an alternative. It is another option for you. Um, there's also working in the medical records department itself. Uh, there are medical record departments in hospitals and a lot of times you, you may not be doing the coding, but you'll be working with the records and things like that. There's also release of information. Now, release of information is not going to get you around the codes, but it will get you around the people that do the hiring for the coders. So that is something that, okay, well, we know so-and-so is certified as a medical coder, but they've been working in release of information. I think we should give them a try. They seem like they're a really hard worker and they have a lot of really good work ethics and everything. So let's see about giving them a shot because when you are already working in a facility, they're much more likely to allow you to transfer over, right? Um, <laughs> now you may get stuck, so just be careful on that, okay? Um, if you transfer over, it's, it's a lot easier for companies to transfer people rather than hire somebody brand new off the street because then they have to do the background check and they got to do all these other things. Um, but with somebody that is transferring from department to department, then you have that opportunity because it's somebody hiring in-house. And so that is an alternative. Uh, don't, don't think that you need to work for free. There's a lot of people who say, well, I'll, I'll just work for free just to get the experience. You don't have to guys. Um, I didn't. When I started out, I started out at a temporary agency. There's a lot of companies out there that specialize in medical professions. If you Google um, temporary uh, agencies for medical personnel, a lot of them will pop up and they will say looking for temporary medical billers and coders. And the more assignments you go on, the more opportunities you're going to have on your resume <laughs> and your resume will start to fill out. And then you will be able to say, look, I have this experience. I've made these connections. And so I would make a good candidate, <laughs> but that's my advice. Um, try not to listen to too many people uh, as far as like, oh, I heard this from this person. This person heard that from this other person. Do your own research. And like I told uh, this viewer, you know, th that that was not true, but that I would address it here. And so again, I'm going to leave the candidate hand guide in the description box below. So that way you guys can see it for yourself. Don't just take by what people tell you. Do your research, folks. And especially if you have a particular question about the certification exam, like uh, the testing, well, what about this or what about that? You can always call the customer service hotline and I'm sure they will be happy to help you if you have a question about the test center or something. And that is something that you can do. Okay, so uh, I hope this is helpful for you. This is a great journey, all right? It, but it is just that, it is a journey. This is a marathon, it is not a sprint. And the studying never stops, okay? So just be prepared, you will have to continue to study even when you get your certification, even when you have your first job, because you want to make sure that you stay on top of everything. <laughs> but best wishes to you all. Uh, if this is your first time getting out there, best wishes. You can do it. Stick with it. Be stubborn and you will get what you want. That's just my advice. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up. Please like, subscribe, share if you haven't already, and I will see y'all next time. Bye.